So telomeres are those shoelace cap at the end of your chromosomes that keep your chromosomes from sort of shortening um, with every time your cell replicates. They're clearly a marker of the aging process, but increasingly being linked to stress. And stress can be, it's an incredibly amorphous concept, so it's very hard to define, whether it's psychosocial stress, what you perceive as stress, whether it's biological stress, so something like oxidative stress or DNA damage. It's really unclear how we would define stress. But telomere length has been associated in multiple studies that we have done here, so we now have three studies. Um, in kids in New Orleans, as well as in Romania, really being a marker of cumulative exposure to a range of different stressors or early adversity. And what this suggests is that we have a marker that is in a cell that is sort of tracking the lasting impact of these negative early life experiences. Building on the work with Catherine Thiel and also the work with Charlie Zena um, to put the two models together. So what do we know? We know that there are all these community level factors and household level factors and environmental factors that predict health outcomes, right? And then we know that early adversity is another component of these negative health outcomes. And to say, if we were going to think of the best place to intervene, or protect and buffer, where would that be? Negative early life events are associated with every health outcome that you can imagine. So diabetes, cardiovascular disease, depression, cognitive decline, mental illness, substance abuse. But what exactly happens biologically that sets that negative health trajectory is relatively unknown. If we have this marker, this cellular marker of telomere length, we can begin to understand or at least track the impact across development. And then we can look at the things that would influence telomere length as potential mechanisms for how these early negative life experiences are embedded and remain within the biological system of children. Um, and so we can track these negative effects in kids, and they're persistent. So our research in the NSPAC study, um, prenatal exposure to tobacco, uh, community-level disorder, so the amount of disorder that you feel in your neighborhood, and witnessing violence. Um, we now have manuscripts showing that those all predict telomere shortening in kids. So there's a lasting effect of these cumulative factors. And then to say, what if strengthening this early parent-child interaction, this early childhood critical relationship that we know influences brain development, we know that it influences sort of the set point for your stress response systems, particularly um, the cortisol or fight or flight response. What if building that and protecting that and strengthening that relationship could actually provide a biological buffer for kids? So if I can't get rid of community violence and I can't get rid of the potential for hurricanes and I can't always make the environment perfect or supportive for kids, what if moms or caregivers or families actually can develop these secure attachment relationships with their children, particularly when they're early, and sort of create a biological bubble wrap that protects them so that we don't end up with all of these negative health outcomes down the line. Um, and that's really the premise of the infant study that we're doing now. The goal of the study is to see if this formation of this secure attachment relationship, not just in terms of what we know for child behavior or child outcomes, it's very protective, but does it biologically protect kids?